Yep, we are casting the Summit 7 Chinese qualifiers. We're in the upper bracket. So even if either of these teams lose out the game, they won't be eliminated from the tournament. And obviously the, the winner gets to kind of go deeper on. Later on after this, we'll be casting... Ten seconds to uh, go. Let me see. We'll be casting IG versus the loser Five of this week. So IG currently is sitting in the lower bracket. And they'll face, uh, well, they'll face whoever that loses this one. So... We're, we're gonna see one of these teams again. And for now, we have a pretty big change of, of drafting, right? Uh, Ricky as the first pick for CBC. Yeah, Ricky is probably one of the most annoying heroes to play against. Uh, I think I used to belong to Monkey King, but with their recent slew of nerfs to the hero, I think Ricky is a little bit more powerful. Um, the thing with Ricky is he actually transitions into a pretty heavy damage dealer later in the game, once again, uh, assuming one of these teams doesn't get uh, stomped too hard. But um, yeah, applying a little bit of early pressure, so we'll see if we have any heroes that work well in tandem with the hero. Yeah, I think the interesting to see is that the first two game, uh, it was just an offensive trialing, right? Versus the defensive trialing. I think this game is going to be vastly different in, in that regard because let me tell you, CDC would not run an offensive trialing feature in Riku there. Uh, I, I think <laughs> the map is going to be more split open. Ricky is looking to help out more lane to lane. Although it was, you know. Uh, We'll see Newbie. Newbie still has the option to run an offensive trolling if they want. Dyer's pick. Uh, yeah, so we have a Disruptor here. Disruptor's pretty good against Ricky. Uh, he's very good against most sne sneaky type heroes. And he's uh, probably one of the more standard, I think, support heroes that you can open up with. He's just pretty good against the you know, vast majority of heroes with his uh, skill kit. Yeah, so I, I think the, the interaction that you see more, more commonly is that Ricky gets Thunderstrike, he gets dusted, so he tries to run away. Disruptor then casts Glimpse, and Ricky tries to dodge it with the uh, what is it, Tricks of the Trade? No, Cloaks and Daggers? No, Tricks of the Trade. Five seconds. But how, it, ultimate, works, yeah. Yeah, how it works out is that even though you dodge, you quote unquote dodge it, you still get pulled back to wherever Disruptor pulls you back to when your ultimate ends. So it's more of a temporary dodge, and it's something that Ricky players uh, will have to learn to deal with. But uh, CDC shows their card. It's going to be a Ricky Life Slur combination. And I'm pretty sure Newbie was expecting that. Um, they could have blocked the Life Slur pick by picking it up themselves, but they elect to give CDC the combo. Yeah, I think CDC picked it up early because uh, they knew that if they didn't pick it up there, that Newbie probably would have blocked it. Because you typically don't want to show your carry this early on, but um, once again, if they didn't pick it up, Newbie probably would have just block picked it. As Lifesteal is probably one of the better heroes against uh, Sand King and Disruptor. Now, I think the other day uh, we saw somebody picked up Life Slur and the enemy team responded by a Tie Hunter pick, and the Life Slur just got dumpstered in the lane, right? So I think the danger of picking up the Life Slur so early is that it gives Newbie time to react, like starting from the lane Radiant stage. Band. We saw what KP was able to do last game with an extremely farmed TIE Hunter. So there are definitely a lot of answers that Newbie could pick up for themselves. Yeah, that's the problem with... Uh, the thing with Lifestealer is I think he has very like few hard counters. Uh, he's probably one of the more... like If you are ever going to pick a safe lane hero very early, he's probably one of the better options. So that's probably why they were comfortable with going with the hero. Um, here we see Banning Out Terrorblade for uh, CDC. So. Uh, I'm not sure if. Hmm. I'm interested to see why they ban out Terror Blade so early. Oh, I, I think it's because it's seen as the natural counter to Life Slur in the sense that if Life Slur doesn't pop out in a bomb and kill Terror Blade, Terror Blade just wins every other aspect of the engagement. Because you, you can't, like, 1v1 him ever, because you can't kill him and he'll sunder you. And then in the later portion of the game, like, once he gets Scotty, Life Slur is just not moving. Yeah. So. I, I think. Yeah, you're kind of conceding the uh, li the late game, I guess, when, if you're going to be banning out the Terror Blade there. Because uh, the thing with Ricky and Lifestealer, I think uh, you can actually get a lot of kills onto these heroes. Uh, of course, that's thinking about like an ideal situation. So, um, Terror Blade is probably a pretty safe ban ult. Yep. Radiance and ban. pretty commonly, Newbie does take out two other vehicle options for the, the Lifestealer, both the Batrider and Slaughter. Surprise that actually Slaughter hasn't been like more popular in the first phase because generally very commonly first phase ban hero. So I think CDEC Dyer's has been pick. banning out Darkseer and Enigma every single game in stage two. So we'll see if Newbie actually picks up the Darkseer here. I don't know if Darkseer is the best hero to pressure Lifesler. 
Instead, they're going to go with Ursa. Radiance pick. Hmm, Ursa again. That's pretty interesting. Uh, Darkseer does uh, work well with the Wombo combo. He works very well with Sand King and Disruptor, of course. Uh, but Ursa, you know, going for the opening. Ursa is one of the heroes that I think just man fights very well with Life Stealer. He doesn't care too much if he gets clouded, and it looks like CDC is going to pick up the Darkseer for themselves here. Yeah. Um, and that's a sick combo, right? You got the Ricky Iron Shell early on to start, like, making yeah. Disruptor's life terrible. So, good stuff. They don't really have an about... insane combo themselves, though, right now. Yeah, but that's what I was going to say is, um, the thing about Ricky's, uh, the thing with the Invis heroes in general is that they're typically what I call, like, economy busters. So okay. they're going to be making the support heroes, you know, buy a lot of sentries and Reserve dusts and things like that. So they won't be able to work towards some of their other items if they aren't able to actually get, you know, kills onto Ricky or, you know, D Ward. Um, using their sentries, so hopefully they're able to buy some time uh, with the lack of economy on the support heroes. I don't know, whenever I play Ricky, I'm like Reaganomics for my opponent. <laughs> <laughs> they buy dust, they earn 300 gold, you know? Just... Yeah, that's that's the other problem. If they actually get kills, then... It pays for the dust and then some. But, uh, alright, Newbie is gonna go back to the Tie Hunter pick for KP, and I kind of mentioned it earlier, it is definitely a very strong lane dominator against Life Stealer. And really, I don't think there is a single support hero that CDEC could pick right now that could give them a good lane versus Tide. So maybe there's an option of dodging Reserve the lane for CDEC. Sending your Life Slayer plus one up, or, you know, up on the top lane, but does Life Slayer want to lane against Ursa either? It feels like this Life Slayer is just stranded, like there is no good lane for him. Yeah, this is either you get a very good lane for Darkseer or you kind of throw your Life Stealer under the bus, I think, and um... That's probably not something that you want to do. Uh, I can't really think of a support that's particularly good against Tidehunter um, in this case. I mean, Tide just like has one level of Kraken show, and you, you know your your support is like, okay, well, I don't do any damage now, so yeah, Tide's OP, dude. Yeah, he's pretty good. I, I, the thing is, I don't see too many Western teams picking up Tide. Um... Uh, have the Chinese teams, you know, I, I don't watch too much Chinese Dota, I've just been watching the qualifiers recently. Is he like a top pick or...? No, he's not. He's actually... I think he's more of a situational pick. Like, I think last game he was picked for the situation for those mid-game fight. Remember, like, Tai was standing in front of the Roche yeah. pit and they just got Aegis? And then this game, I think he's more or less picked for the laning stage, but again, it's gonna be the Ursa plus Tai combo. So we're gonna see Newbie, uh, once again, once he gets to the 15-20 minute mark where Tai has to mech and Ravage, he's gonna just stand in front of the Roshan pit. And make it hard for CDC to come in, but Dying CDC will pick up Witch Doctor, which I think it has one of the higher base damage as most support hero goes, and technically has some kill potential if the casket gets lucky bounces and if you have an early level of Malik, uh, he could do some work. Ten seconds to go. Yep, uh, Ricky Witch Doctor is a pretty decent roaming duo if they ever feel Dying like um, they. Just the thing is, if you can make some space for the Life Sailor, I think he does eventually pretty decently against Tidehunter. So if you can maybe get up a two or three levels onto the hero, then you can kind of roam around with the Ricky and Witch Doctor and create a lot of pressure. Um, Nubi still hasn't picked their mid hero unless... Um, the thing is, Ursa can very rarely go into the mid lane, so we'll see if it's a matchup. It looks like it's going to be a mid Magnus. Yo, alright, so before Magnus was all the rage in this patch, I think... Maybe six months ago, or maybe a year ago, September, who's going to be playing the Magnus mid. Or not September, Shade, sorry. Shade is going to be playing the Magnus mid. He had this build where he went Battle Fairy Magnus. Yeah, Battle Fairy, Echo Saber, uh, what is the upgrade to uh, Calling Blade, Iron Talon? Iron oh. Talon. He was all about the... Ooh, this is going to be a KP Naga, I think. Nope, SD Naga. Right, anyway, so he is going to be farming up a storm. Um, and he has to because he's going to be the secondary carry of choice in this game. But Newbie looking to play some Naga Dota. So this game, one way or another, is going to be going long. This is giving me uh, some terrible flashback <laughs> to the, the Naga game that we experienced earlier in pubs. Uh, that was Quest Dota. Quest Dota at its finest. Um, so back to this game, I think it's a it's a pretty decent Naga draft. They have heroes that can create a lot of space her, for her with the uh, Tidehunter. Like all of the all the other four heroes are very good at creating space for the Naga, and eventually they can you know start getting objectives once the Naga's farmed up here. So it's going to be the onus is going to be on CDC to make a lot of plays here yep. and uh, try to shut down the Naga. And they have a way to do so, right? Ricky just with a Lysler inside looking for a Naga, 
Now, I think... Actually, they could easily kill the Naga as well, right? You just cloud on top of her, pop out with open wounds. Right, look like the yeah. Naga's dead. I, I think that's... Yeah, that's the ideal scenario. But the, the issue is that... Um... You can probably do that for the, maybe the first 15 minutes of the game or so, but uh, after Tidehunter and Sand King get a little bit of items, it's going to be very hard uh, to kind of just blow up the Naga instantly. The yeah. thing is, she is a relatively low HP hero for the vast majority of the game, so until she farms up something like an Octarine, and she has a pretty high strength growth, so before she gets those levels, you can probably take her down. I mean, she has decent armor, which is like pretty important yeah. versus uh, Feast as well as Backstab. I actually think it's more up to what Moogie does, right? Imagine if Moogie picks up an early Vlads and Blink Dagger, and instead of you like trying to gank the Naga, he's ganking your supports, forcing you to kind of play on your half the map. I think Naga prefers that the most. So to me, uh, the, the the player to be looking out for is the Ursa. And, and honestly, judging from how Moogie played in Game 1 and Game 2, I, I thought he played pretty impressively. So I'm expecting him to do well here again. Yeah, he played exceptionally. Um, I think the thing with uh, this game that's going to be a lot more different is that Riki is very good at placing Observer Wards, and the thing with Naga is she's a hero that likes to kind of duck into her own jungle after a certain point and just farm up the jungle. So right. Riki can get those stealthy wards in, and then they'll be able to go for a Lifestealer Bombs and get pretty easy kills if uh, Newbie's not around to help her. Interesting. Demon places a Deep Observer. We saw Kaka doing this last game. So both teams kind of trying out the same Observer spot. Not exactly sure how important that ward was, but early game smoke here from Newbie looking to maybe scout out Ricky. Like, do they have dust available? They have a sentry available on Kaka. And they have a dust on Sanking as well. Okay. Yeah, they definitely have enough to, to kill Ricky should they run into them. But the smoke is about to end. Uh, did they see him there? I don't. I don't know if well, it they actually him. him. <laughs> and the dust actually catches him, but he's just teeping out. Glimpse level one selected. Oh, oh, he took glimpse, but it was he was able unable to cast it. All right, e economy buster, man. September <laughs> economy is buster. September is doing it. Ninety gold down the drain. Yeah, doesn't. Uh, oh man, dust doesn't cost mana anymore. It's gonna say five mana down the drain too. Alright, calm down. <laughs> Five mana that gets regen. <laughs> hey man, one time I played against an invoker like a couple years ago. He EMP'd me and I could not dust. Man, that, that is a hard counter to dust EMP. Alright, it looks like I think Dark is just jungling. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, another thing I want to talk about very quickly is that Lysiel actually went for a very early Blightstone, uh, which is pretty decent against the Tide, but the issue here is he's going to get dual linked, so that's not going to be a good time for him. Yeah, Caustic in particular, it's going to be pretty rough against him. But again, I think Watch Doctor is probably one of the be better supports you could pick in a situation like this. Uh, yeah, he's alright. Um, he went for a very early Yo. point to Maledict, so they can try to pressure him. Level 1 Maledict, man. Just let her rip. Looking right clicks. Yeah. I think that's what they have to kind of do at this point. Looks like they're going to try har harassing out the Lifestealer, but he should be fine. Um, I think the lane is going to be relatively okay. The issue is when the offlane heroes actually start getting a little bit more levels. Because yeah. I don't think Lifestealer's level 2 is particularly good. Which Doctor does get cast, but it's not going to do too much against these you know, beefy kind of Blizzard type It's more heroes. of the, the Kraken Shell level 2 and, and the Caustic yeah. level 2. Like, actually I was surprised that Demon is able to do... Wait, what happened? I think Shea pushed... SC back, but SC just made illusion on his tower, so he's fine. But yeah, the, the Maledict actually did a lot of work. Kaka now Burrow Shrek's in. Uh, he's able to trade fairly effectively. Yeah, I, don't know, I was slide showing for a little bit but there, but it seems to calm down. I also think the, the nature of how um, this bottom lane will go is that both, both uh, heroes are going to be trading a lot. I think trading benefits Newbie because they, they have a shrine to fall back onto. Whereas CDC, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, you know, if you're out of region, you're out of region. You need to buy more. Yeah, it's definitely true. And the other thing is, um, you have to always consider which, uh, you know, the, who are the heroes that are actually getting these trades. So if you get, like, a Sand King and a Tidehunter and they end up getting maybe, like, 50% or 60% the farm of the Lifestealer, that's actually, like, I think a lot better than uh, just getting completely zoned out. So the, the fact that they're able, you know, even able to kind of contest and eke out a little bit of advantage against the Lifestealer is definitely noteworthy. Alright. Well, so far, Shade has the one point into uh, Empower. I wonder if he's actually going to be maxing it first. I did mention that he did have a, a thing for maxing Empower and, and Battle Fury and all that jazz. But... 
Oh, mid lane, Shade might be getting solo kill. SC with the haste room walking in, blocking him a little bit along the way here. He will have Riptide in two seconds, and the haste room will allow him to keep up. This could be a solo blood, solo first kill. And nice guy even pushes him away, so the TP will not do anything. Yeah. That was a, a, a bit overzealous from the, the mag bear. I think um, you probably want to level up Shockwave here because you are able to kill the Naga Illusions pretty easily. But um, if Sand King makes these early rotations and is going to be a little bit annoying for the mag, you might want to get those points into Empire. So I think he's going to wait a little bit to see how the Sand King kind of plays his game. If he notices that the Sand King is roaming a little bit on him, he'll probably get more points into Empower. Otherwise, I think he should be relatively okay against the Naga with just spamming out the Shockwaves. So very interesting adjustment of play here. Uh, we talked about what you know the Sand King and, and Tai could do in the bottom lane, but after getting the Tai to quick level three, Tai is just jungling straight up now, and that frees up the Sand King. But at the same time, Life Slayer could do whatever he wants on the bottom lane, and that also frees up Demon on the Witch Doctor. So he is able to start rotating. Yeah, I think when they saw that the Witch Doctor had Maledict uh, very early on, that it was going to be a little bit troublesome to lane against him, because I think if he actually went cast level 1, that lane might have been, I wouldn't say lost, but it would have been a lot harder. Getting that Maledict, he ended up taking like 70% of his health yeah. right away, and yeah, that was, that's no joke. I'm pretty impressed, actually, with the level 1 Maledict. It's not something you see too often, but in, in a situation like this, it definitely worked out, because Tai Hunter is not strong, or not tanky until level 2 with a Kraken. Casket flying yeah. out, Kaka will be eating a couple of right clicks, and they have to the Maledict as well. Is that a level 2 Maledict? No, just level 1, so it's pretty puny, but with the Blink Strike coming through, they will get the kill. Alright. You did mention that they could roam pretty effectively, but damn, I didn't expect that kill. Yeah. I think that the, that's, that's, a, that's a really good thing about Ricky is that uh, you always want someone who's constantly doing damage as the Maledict takes kind of go, and they have the Darkseer Ion Shell uh, that they can always throw onto the Ricky, as you mentioned earlier. So they are going to have a little bit of uh, kill potential here. They can pressure the Ursa. He's just farming under his tower for the time being. Um, going back to the mag, it looks like he is going to be leveling up the Shockwave. And uh, as, as I stated earlier, Shockwave is very good at clearing out the Naga Illusions. So if uh, SCCC ever feels like um, you know using that to kind of farm up, he can always clear them out. Right. And let's not forget, you do get a little bit of gold for killing the Illusions. So it's not, a, it's not nothing. Top lane. The circle of feeling gets dropped, and uh, he is stuck there a little bit for now. They have the glimpse available, but it's only a level 1 glimpse, so it was a long cooldown. They will dust up on Ricky. Ricky trying to juke, and ankles are absolutely broken. He blinks wow. right, and now there's two Iron Shell Creeps just freaking killing Faith. Alright, he's fine too, but 90 more gold down the drain. These guys get the Shrine up. Oh no, Shrine's not available. Yeah, but that's a pretty decent trade overall, I think. They have a double ion trail running on to the, uh, the creeps there for the Earth, so it's going to make a little bit of trouble. And of course, once again, economy busting, right? <laughs> Getting the uh, dust thrown out, no kills. Yeah, let's I mean, count. that's 180 gold. Yeah, let's, let's, start adding, let's start adding up like, how much gold they, or they will miss out for yeah, all the missed dust and missed entries. 180 gold, man. That's like right. almost three Observer Wards. That's, that's no joke. Yeah. I'll take that. Back in the mid lane. So, uh, I gotta say, SC, you know, after getting that solo uh, solo first blood, is actually doing quite okay. Uh, he's received absolutely no pressure whatsoever so far from CBEC. And the bottom lane, we have a little bit of a thing going on to the tide here. Yep, that is gonna be a kill, I Oh, that is a kill. Yep. Maledict. What a spell. Uh, what? How many points does he have? Yeah, he's got a second point into that. I think if he didn't have a second point, that might have not been a killer. At the very least, it probably would have been a longer chase. Yeah, Maledict has like such an interesting scaling. Like level one, it just doesn't do anything, and then as soon as you have that level two, it's actually like a pretty legit threat. Even Tai Hunter goes down to it. Yeah. And I think that's the... he probably wasn't expecting the uh, level 2 Maledict because typically you go one point for the early zoning on the offlaners and then you want to get a cask for the, the control. Um, so yeah. considering he's level 5 and he's got you know decent points into crack and shell here, he probably thought it was more safe than he was. Yeah. I see farming extremely well right now, leading in terms of the net worth. Shay misses his shockwave though, but here comes the gank party. 
Faith is in position as well. Blink Strike. Oh, the song. Ooh, this could be real bad. Sand King's gonna pour it as well. Who do they want? Who do you want? They want the support on the right side. It's gonna be the Witch Doctor. Okay, the Smoke Cloud's gonna be there. They Burrow Strike in as well. Kaka, though, eats quite a bit of damage for the Maledict. They glimpse him back too. Shade. Gonna be giving up a kill. The nice body blocking coming out from KP. Can they actually get him down? The Kinetic Field. Not gonna trap him. The Cloud's gonna come through as well. Shade taking a lot more damage, but the big tankiness of Magnus allows them to walk away. That could have been actually really bad, but they were able to trade one for one, so not too bad for CDEC. Yeah, I think it was actually a heads up play to go for the Witch Doctor. The Unfortunately, they weren't able to get him before he threw the cask out there. So uh, that's a bit unfortunate there, because I think if you go for the Ricky, you kind of um, give the free cask of the Witch Doctor. It makes it a little bit easier for Magnus to do his stuff, so... Targeting the Witch Doctor, I think definitely the right play, just a bit unfortunate. Looks like he is going to be putting up uh, a few more points into the Empower rather than opting to go back for the Skewer. This is pretty standard ever since a Skewer has been buffed, um, since it has a pretty decent range at level 1 now. Right. So he's going to be ducking back into his jungle, and this is what I said. Probably he's going to be ducking back, lets uh, the Witch Doctor get a couple of levels, and when Witch Doctor gets his ultimate, he becomes a pretty decent threat onto the Ursa. Well, whenever he's not in his ultimate form, because... Yeah, it, well, that's the thing. Um, when you maledict, uh, yeah, that's that's true. Because if you maledict the Ursa and then he's in his ulti form, uh, you're not going to be doing too much damage to him. So even when the ulti wears off, it's not going to be doing too much. A little bit of sentry battle on the mid lane here. Maybe you're going to see a little bit of kill attempt. Cassette's going to fly out. They have a glimpse away, but push him back. Ooh, the gl Ooh. the skewer got cancelled. But here comes the Ricky. They really want to take in as much damage as they can for SC. That should be the last tick of them. I don't think it might be enough here. Oh my god. All right. Oh, that was very close. I think uh, if he was able to get a Ion Shell onto him before he started that whole thing. I think he did have Ion Shell on him. Oh, did he? Did it just yeah. wear off? Okay. Because he, he ran from, you know, top lane to, to mid, so... I think if that glimpse wasn't there to, you know, stop the skewer halfway, that, that wouldn't yeah, guarantee. That, that was very clutch. Very, very nice play. But like you pointed out, Ricky has been dropping a couple of deep wards, blocks out this camp. But Naga should be aware of that now as uh, the camp is blocked out and maybe a uh, support will be warded eventually. Yeah, I think uh, he put it in a really good spot because he kind of put it in a... To be quite frank, he puts he put in a relatively poor spot. It doesn't see too much into the dire jungle, but at the same time, it makes it harder to actually deward it. I think people um, generally deward by putting it here, right? So it might just miss. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I think he purposely put it there to, because uh, ideally you want to put a little bit more to the left. It gives you more vision, but then it, it makes it more uh, susceptible Kaka. to dewording. Oh, it looks like the smoke cloud will miss, and now the surge. He's trying to juke himself or something. The iron shell doing a little bit of work here. Kaka can't burrow strike through. There's a casket. Where's the maledict? Maledict's there, there as well, and Kaka. Well, he's just getting run down. Yo, TP out as well. Where's the glimpse? The glimpse cancel the TP. They drop the sentry ward. Alright, one for one is the trade, but not too bad for CDC. They drew a couple of TP out there and they're applying pressure. The problem is, SC has been untouched. He's doing whatever the hell he wants to do. Yeah, this is, uh, not, and the, the TP wasn't so bad because Ursa just goes back to the safe lane anyway. Right. Um, so yeah, Naga's gonna be farming up a storm here very soon, I think. Uh, they. The thing we don't see too much anymore is uh, teams just dropping a whole bunch of sentries in the other teams. Uh, like, Ricky can just go and block, like, two camps with uh, a couple observers or sentries. Um, and I think we should be... S I mean, I don't know. Is that too much of an idealistic way to think? Because I think you just block a lot of camps when you're playing against Naga. Um, yes and no. I, I think the fact that uh, the camps got changed where you where they don't spawn that frequently anymore anyways, maybe it's too much of an investment. Yeah, but, uh, that's a very good point. Well, remember that move I talked about in the draft where they just walk into the Roshan pit? If they don't get discovered, they take the Rosh for free. If they do get discovered, KP just stands in front. Now, last time he did have a mech for this. Or last game, rather. But this time, I think the sneak is going to be good enough here. CDC is now aware of the situation, but way too late. A sneak should be able to take it down. Maybe they could catch him on the way out. Roshan goes down, and now the song! It's gonna be retreat. In fact, they want to fight this. They drop the static storm. Beautiful storm on, on on KP. So now he can't actually ravage. No, just kidding. That was their own storm. So the ravage does come out. <laughs> they kill the life stealer. Now Demon's on the top side. Body block coming out from Kaka. That is wait. Okay, that is gonna be a kill. All right. So they get the Aegis. They song set up with the storm. 
And uh, they get three kills on top of that. And now, SC will really feel absolutely no pressure after that. He's also halfway to his relic. Really, yeah, really that's what I was going to mention. Um, they don't have the mech on the Tidehunter yet, but they have the uh, Naga ultimate, and that's always a great tool to have. Especially with heroes like Disruptor and Sand King, we saw there, that was a perfect... That was very well played by the Disruptor. Um, and then when Sand King gets his Blink Dagger, he can kind of actually stay a little bit further back and kind of contribute the same way. Um, so, Naga was just a, a really great pick to kind of round out their team. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's just stick your objectives early on, and of course the Wombo combo factor is always there. I mean, you talked about how the onus is more on CDEC, right? So every yeah. fight that they lose like that is it's so just backbreaking. And I do apologize for like brain fart. Like, <laughs> not the disruptor was yeah. on the radiant side for a bit. Kaka though looks like he is gonna get caught. Again, they are applying a ton of pressure. It's just the pressure is not on the, the target that you really want to be. And now, SC's on the other side of the map. That's the one other thing that you can't really do about like blocking your jungle. Like SC just says, okay, I'm gonna just farm in your jungle now. Yeah, I think Naga's kind of gotten to that point where um, she's a little bit harder to take down. You know, she doesn't have the greatest HP pool, but 1,200 is, uh, you know, almost 1,250. Nothing to, you know, scoff at. And uh, her teammates are getting, you know, those key items they're working towards their thing. You have Tidehunter farming up a double Ancient stack here. Or is that triple? I think that's a triple there that she's finishing up there. Faith is going to drop the storm, but, well, Magnus is going to hit him three times and almost gets a kill. Nice Shockwave. And uh, Magnus yeah. gets the kill. Uh, that, that's one of those uh, deaths I just kind of give up as a support. Like, I think his team, if they really wanted to save him, they probably could have walked over there, but they're like... No, uh, as a disruptor. We, we, yeah, we got a farm here, but... You know what's what's that kill on? That That's really on the disruptor. Like, this this area... Like, somebody told me, the Nexon champion, Aelson, he says... As a support, <laughs> as a support, you never farm here. You never farm yeah, here. Yeah, you, you don't. Especially during nighttime, you just die. And, uh, well, let's just say that Faith is not a Nexon champion. He's a TI champion, but, <laughs> but, but not a Nexon champion. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Wise words from uh, Yozun. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, we have a bit of a yeah, congregation at top. Wait, Bro Shrek could be the start up here. Bro Shrek's gonna be there. The casket will fly out though. Demons dropping. Okay, good wall on top. There's a glimpse away. I'm not sure who was getting the glimpse away. That was the Magnus. But it looks like they're gonna be able to turn around. That is gonna be his Aegis on Mugi. Now he does have a blink to maybe perhaps get out of a face on the back line. Will get chopped down as well. Really good play. No blink out for Mugi here as they pop the rage. They're looking to right click. Mugi gonna get confused here. And now the congregation of CDEC will punish. That was a four for nothing fight. Naga isn't getting punished, but the rest of the team is. And if you look at the net worth, CDC is leading by 3,000 gold. The question is, is that lead big enough against Naga? Yeah, the thing is, uh, Magnus actually went for an Echo Saber build, and the thing about Echo Saber is uh, it's a pretty greedy build because it does help accelerate your farm quite a bit, but um, it kind of acts as like the pseudo Midas. Uh, I would say it's a little bit more of a fighting kind of pseudo Midas style, where uh, you can fight a little bit, you can farm a little bit, and then um, you can work towards your items, especially with that in power. So, since they are getting these kills, I think it's going to pay off. He's probably going to be going to get it. I wonder what talent he's going to go for here. Um, so he did go for attack speed instead of spell lamp. Sometimes we see people go for spell lamp on Magnus because it lets you one shot their range creeps. Right. But, but uh, um, yeah, he's going for the attack speed. He's going full on farm mode here. Yeah, he's going to be having the the blink queued up. And it looks like Flyby is getting ready to be involved in this game. He he took like essentially the first fifteen minute off. Has the Hanamidas, has the armlet, and now they're looking to amp up the pressure. And here comes the first of the many Ricky bombs. They see all the Ty Ty Hunter is going to be a tough kill, though. He's got the Kraken, yeah. he's got the mech. He will debuff himself with the Kraken. They know he's inside. The good thing about Ricky is uh, you can't obviously Kraken off the smoke. Okay, they, they have vision on him. Are they going to blink in? This is some YOLO big dive. Ooh, this is not a good spot for CDC if they go in deeper. KP is still inside. Alright, he's caught up on the back line though. They pick up one. Disruptor ultimate again, not doing too much. On the front, they have a two-man RP. The casket is bouncing left and right. Looks like the death one will get cancelled. The song will be retrieved, but the mail deck, the big mail deck on SC, he's gonna pop. The song's gonna be over. Mugi does actually have the TP out. Meanwhile, we have September going on Kaka. Kaka going into the sandstorm. Fly by moving forward, cutting off his retreat pop. Nice vacuum back. And that is gonna be yet another four for nothing. Alright. That was big. Oh, Mugi actually didn't even make it out. He he died in his fountain too. I believe yeah. a maledict. 
that Maledict was it got stocked up pretty high onto him. Um, I think uh, KP kind of held onto that title T for a little bit too long. They probably dropped it a little bit earlier as his allies were teleporting in. And then uh, when he threw it out, it was kind of just awkward. I think they might have only clipped like a couple heroes. Um, and most of his team was RP'd when he threw, the, threw out that ultimate, so they weren't able to capitalize on that. I mean, let's be real, at this point of the game, their ultimates are only really strong if they all combo together, right? But the nature yep. of that initiation was, like, they, they were all split up. Tai Hunter was in the trees. Fave had to drop an ultimate to save himself, and, well, Sand King doesn't even have his ultimate, so... You know, they were never really going to combo it off, so I, I don't really think it's KP's fault. Like, there was no good yeah. ultimate option there. Yeah. I, I don't think I don't think it's his fault either, but um, I think when they dived really far, the, 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 I think the main issue was that he ulted at the exact same time that Mag got his uh, RP off. So right. it was like, sure, you don't have your great combos, but it's better than you know getting no spells off when you uh, you you basically just Naga ulted. That was basically an, that Ravage could be thought of as a Naga ulti because it right. both teams were just kind of stunned up. Now CDC turning up the gas super fast. Now the radiance is online. And that is some next level Super Saiyan animation on, on the Naga. <laughs> Dumb pay to win animation. Looks sick, but not really helping the situation right now. Yeah, um, I, I mean, the game's gone a slightly worse than I think. I'm okay, slightly might. It's, it's gone, you know, relatively bad, but I don't think it's, you know, it's not anywhere near the end of the game, you know. I need to kind of reiterate that. So this is where kind of Naga will get to her um, mass if they're kind of able to do the high ground defense, you know, Sand King disrupted, these heroes are very good at defending high ground, and of course, uh, Tidehunter whenever he has his ultimate. So they will be able to hold that for a little bit and let Naga kind of split up the map and farm. I, I think the danger of what you're running into as newbie right now is because your early game was so weak on a lot of your other heroes, yes, Naga will be able to drag the game out, but at the expense of your rest of your team, right? They won't be farming yeah. as effectively yeah. anymore. Like Kaka, at this point, still doesn't have the Blink Dagger. In fact, he's very far away from that. But Naga, as, as just Naga does, just have to keep doing what he does. Remember that Naga yeah. game we played earlier in pubs and our Storm was just crying like there's no camps <laughs> anywhere. Yeah, that's that's very true. Um, I would say typically it's not a, you know not the worst thing for Naga farms, but it's a very good thing that you mentioned that most of their key items are you know very far off. Here we have uh, Ursa actually being initiated at top here. Yeah, and when yeah. Your Ursa dies like this, oh, he pops the rage, tries to TP out. Man, Flyby apparently does a frick ton of damage. He just got yeah. melted. I was just saying uh, earlier, you, you brought up a really good point, is that the it's typically not so bad that the Naga kind of farms everything. It, the main issue is that the Sand King doesn't have his core items, you know, Disruptor has, you know, sitting at just Arcane Boots. So um, they're not going to be able to pick up their key items. This is typically why when, you know, you play a position for like Clockwork, I see people get like Midas on Clockwork, which is typically, uh, you know, not the best item. Clockwork is a very good, you know, farm, you know, fighting here early on, you want those key items. But when you have a hero like Naga, you know the game's going to drag out. So yep. um, I wouldn't be too surprised if we see some relatively questionable, you know, Midas pickups, maybe like 30 minutes in the game. I, I don't know. It's I'm, I'm not sure if they can go for it, really. They kind of have to just make sure they're able to defend their high ground, I guess. Right. Um, like, for example, Kaka, right? Like, I, I don't think he could even consider Hannah Midas. Like, his team yeah, just no, needs no, him he, to yeah. get a fighting item so badly. So, yes, you know the game's going to drag out, but I'm not sure how much you could do. And, and constantly, I, I love the pressure that September's doing. Blink in, they cloud, they open wounds, and this Ursa, who is supposed to be creating pressure for you, is just fading. Yeah. I think that phase is kind of a little bit over, uh, and this is what I was saying earlier um, uh, with the last game, I should say, is that you should have some heroes uh, with the Ursa. You know, if you have a Disruptor there, one glimpse onto even the uh, even the Ricky. You know, Ricky does a pretty decent amount of damage for a uh, position three in this game, I guess you'd say. Um, so just glimpsing one hero out can definitely save the Ursa there. So they should be allocating a little bit more hero support to him. Or the Tide, right? I think the Tide yeah, probably. Yeah, anyone, yeah. anyone. Well, meanwhile, we got CDC just kind of simultaneously, systematically taking down uh, the rest of the Elder Tower. And that next Roshan, I, I wonder if actually CDC will attempt to get it, because I think that might be the best way that Newbie could make a comeback. They bring Roche low, you know, Song, you take Roche and you take a teamfight there. In fact, though, it's going to be Newbie trying to desperately go into the Roche themselves. I I'm not sure if this will work out for them. Yeah, they're just going for a beeline here. Um, CDC is not really, you know, reacting to the reacting to this, so it looks like it's going to be newbies Roshan here. Well, Ricky is going to scout things out. Roshan's at half HP, and now 
They're gonna pop the smoke. They got the RP. They got well, too late. Nuki takes the Aegis. And yeah, the song, they... the song should just run right. They want to fight this. Uh, uh, they should storm. definitely run here. They could storm on top of him. Well, no, they want to storm the Witch Doctor of all people. Meanwhile, the BKB gets activated. That's why they didn't storm him. The Lifestar pops out. Ti Champ is down. And now. KP is on the run. So far, so good here. One for one trade. Not too bad here for uh, for newbie, considering that you are so far behind. Yeah. Um, they did blow song, so they're not going to be able to reset anything that happens in front of their base. So if their heroes get, you know, dove on, the only thing they have to rely on is basically the Ravage. Disruptor did ulti. But it looks like they're going to be going back to just farming, so not yep. too much lost. Now, do you think this is more or less like a farming Aegis for this Ursa? Like, can they, uh, yeah, can they make this like any aggressive play with this Aegis? Uh, see, sometimes, I say every time I'm watching a game, like from one of these big tournaments, and I'm like, this is going to be a farming Aegis, I always see the teams do the more unexpected play. So, potentially, we'll see a gank happen in two minutes. Um, Sand King is relatively close to that Blink Dagger, just about. So, uh, perhaps if Sand King's able to get a little bit more farm, they can do something with that. Right. Ursa obviously had his Blink for a while, but I don't. I think I've seen him like make any type of aggressive play, and, and CDC yeah, yeah. is not going to give them options here. They're grouping up, and looks like they're thinking about ending the game here, or at least poking at the tier three a bit. Yeah, I think they can do a little bit of damage. Um, the Vanguard really tells the story of how this game is going. Typically, you want to go for a Basher instead of the Vanguard if you're playing Ursa. So right. they're just going to play a little bit safe here. I think last game in this position, he had a Vlad and Deso on top of that blink. Yeah. Bottom side, it's gonna be the Naga getting caught out here. Is there a force to have to push him away? There is nothing. They get the kill. And is there a punish? Okay, they find the Ricky, but you know, who the hell cares? No, they glimpse one back. The RP is gonna be there. Leisler is inside the storm. Everyone gets pushed out away though. Shay with the big place here. Now the Leisler is not silenced anymore and he wins the man fight against Mugi. His Aegis is triggered. And now I think they're thinking about killing him a second time. He blinks away very quickly. So the retreat is there, but the damage has already been done. The mid wave is pushed in. They want to actually go deeper and further. And CDC getting some critical kills. There is Ravage still available, but you know, just no good opportunity to use it. Yeah, Sand King also dies uh, when he was about 300 gold or so. Wing Skewer the finds the Disruptor. He's done. The wall is going to be there. KP again trying to use that Ravage. I mean. What is the follow-up to Ravage at this point? I don't know. Uh, they're, uh, they're, I'm not sure if they can fight. They, they should just, you know, defend the high ground. They did a pretty good job there after they lost some key heroes. You know, their tower took very minimal damage, and um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too sure. You know, they did have an Aegis for that fight, so they were, they're not going to have the Aegis anymore. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit harder this time around. I mean, it was the farming Aegis anyway, so yeah. <laughs> So uh, Ursa is going for the BKB. Um, it's going to make him a lot more survivable against the Ricky Smoke Cloud, that's for sure, because uh, if sure. you have an Ags, you are... <laughs> Do you see what's happening? What happened? New farming yeah, they're farming the, the uh, illusions, yeah. Dude, this is, this is some, like, bad signs there, dude. Yeah, they uh, they actually nerfed that because uh, his illusions used to give a lot more gold, and yeah. then people were just farming, so they're like, all right, we need to get rid of it. I mean, I, I still think that was used to be a meme. You, you, like, you have four girls farming the <laughs> wall, you know, that's... That's not efficient, but uh... Hey man, tell that to Eternal Envy, man. I don't know. Has, has he died farming under the wall? Uh, probably. Probably at least once or twice. Okay. I, I wouldn't know. I would- If you're- If that was one of the trivia questions, I would answer yes. <laughs> ESL has the- Some of the best trivia questions. I remember- I remember ESL, like, took Envy's top animes from his My Anime list. And so, <laughs> it's like, what anime did Envy rate like, you know, 10 out of 10? That is some, oh, like, man. that's some real dedication to the craft right there. Alright, we got another smoke ant coming out. Ricky, oh, Kaka. Oh, man. He's so close. Oh, he's going for a four stack. Two man so RP, and well, <laughs> KP is thinking about using that ult, but he knows that ult is going to do nothing. Mookie's on the run right now, on the right side. TI champs down again. He drops his storm, but it hits nobody. Alright, three dead. Still got the ravage though. And this Magnus is just insanely farmed. Uh, he's going for a Daedalus now. He's just gonna be destroying those. Like if he ever is able to just hit a Naga illusion, all of them are just gonna die like instantly. Oh, if he doesn't miss. 
but uh, yeah, that's it's yeah. pretty. It's a pretty decent chance he's got Echo Saber. All right, Rage right click the buildings. Can we get one Womble combo? No, Sankey now gets pushed away. Kaka will throw Shrek to the left side of the vacuum back in, and now the smoke cloud. So KP could not get off the Ravage as a defensive mechanism. Song being used, they ensnare him up. Flyby literally does not care. Just right clicks the racks. And he gets it down. Ravage gonna come out here. They need a fight now. They don't have the storm. Where's the epicenter? They look to bring one down. Dark Sears out. Okay, the cloud though is gonna be a, no a very big annoyance. Mugi is gonna get right click down. The buyback coming out from the Dark Sears, and Flyby will take down the remainder of the racks. And CDC is just on a huge dominated fashion here. And they're looking yeah. to take the second lane. I feel so bad for Kaka. Man, he was at like 2,200 gold oh. at one point. He still doesn't have to blink, oh my god. No, he, he's, he's going for four staff. I think at this point it might be the right choice. Uh, he was so close to it and then they got that scare onto him. Zero Shrek gonna be there, they got Storm on top, pretty good one here, but BKB gets activated. In fact, Life Slayer has a BKB, so there is no respect whatsoever for the Storm. Everyone survives that combo, and unfortunately the Raxes will not survive. When's the last time you've seen a BKB Life Slayer? Uh, it's been some, quite some time, but it, it, this, you know, Disruptor is probably one of the few heroes that warrants it, and looks like they are gonna call out the GG here. Yep. Oh, that's it. I gotta say, uh, we don't generally see the mid Magnus too often, but there was, there was definitely a good showing for it. Like, he was just a big force in the mid game. Yeah, you're uh, definitely right. I think Magnus played well. He just, you know, pushed out the waves, went into the jungle, farming with that Echo Saber. And I think they got, a, I wouldn't say lucky, but they played very well. And the uh, Echo Saber definitely paid off in the end. And I stated earlier, Echo Saber is kind of that middle ground between farming and fighting. Uh, typically, you'll see it sometimes on a hero like Sven, where you farm a little bit and you fight a little bit with the Echo Saber. And yep. it definitely helped him get a lot of gold. I think he was like the highest net worth by like 2,000 or 3,000 at the end. I, I he just kind of ran down newbie. I think the most impressive thing for me was that CDC wasn't, you know, like zero to zero to sixty from the beginning, right? Like they they basically farmed for like fifteen minutes. Yeah, Ricky was running around doing some stuff, but I was commenting at least for the first ten minutes. SCCC was the highest net worth. He was able to get you know pretty much two radiance uncontested. But as soon as Flyby said, "Okay, I got my item, I got my Midas, I got my my uh, armlet, let's go." And then it was just, you know, Ricky ganks nonstop, and that's what really took over the game. Uh, Newbie was even able to get a, you know, Aegis or two, but that didn't even matter because CDC was just able to run their ganks so efficiently. So, very well played by CDC. They will be moving on, and as a result, Newbie will be dropping to the lower bracket. Coming out next, we got IG versus Newbie as our uh, best of three, and the loser of that series will be eliminated from the Summit Seven Chinese qualifiers. But that's going to conclude it for this series. Resoccer, thank you for joining me uh, for this this particular cast. Any any final words before we uh, take a short break here? Uh, nothing. It was just the games have been pretty good. You know, they've been a little bit stompy, but uh, some great stuff to analyze overall. Uh, that Malade pickup at level one was really yeah. one of the. It's it's such a small thing, but it, it, you know, typically life stealer gets kind of uh, dumpstered by tide hunter. Getting that Maledict you know, push tight under out of lane, and then it really freed up the Witch Doctor and Ricky to kind of roam around. So heads up play from CDC, good games overall.